Hi, I'm Gail Banks, and I'd like to introduce you to the Banks Super Turbo Diesel. How would you like to wake up in a dark bedroom with this thing sitting in the corner staring at you? Oh, God. The last time you saw this engine, it was in Dino Cell 1, and it was supercharged with a set of zoomies on the exhaust side. Well, I wasn't happy with the 666 horsepower we got. I want more. When we tested the Monster Mutt, we found that to be competitive, you need 12 to 1300 horsepower in a monster truck. So we wanted to do a diesel version that had the throttle response that that 540 inch big block blown alcohol Chevy had. Go for it. Okay. That's smoky. Woo! Yeah. We've tested the blower portion of this. Now we're going to overlay that this pair of precision turbos, and we're going to blow the blower. And oh, by the way, this spaghetti all has a purpose. Let me walk you through this. It all starts with our bank's high temp cast and ported exhaust manifolds. Take a look at one on the bench. So we've got a stock exhaust manifold in the background here, and this is the bank's high performance manifold in the foreground. The stock exhaust ports are quite small. You know, a lot of guys really get focused in on what they're doing, shoving air into the engine, shoving fuel into the engine. Well, it's got to get out. This is something I'm really big on. It's called cylinder fill percentage. Cylinder fill percentage is the percentage of the air density in the intake manifold that gets into the cylinder. Once it's in the cylinder, and you run through the combustion process, now you've got to get all of it out of the cylinder. A poor exhaust system won't scavenge the cylinders. If you don't scavenge the cylinders to the greatest extent possible, exhaust remains in the cylinder when the intake stroke begins. That compromises everything you're doing with the compressor, the intercooler, the manifold, the intake ports, the valve size, all that jive is kind of restrained by the cylinder fill percentage. So it starts with bigger exhaust valves, better flowing exhaust ports, a better flowing exhaust manifold, or a set of headers feeding the turbo or turbochargers. These fit all the way from 2001 to 2016, all the engines in that range. When you go to L5P, we're doing a new casting for the L5P. You can see the intake ports here. They are much larger and will accommodate any port on any head that's commercially available today. It's, it's the outlet that's also important. The stock manifold, the outlet is about an inch and three quarter in diameter. And on the bank's manifold, we're at two and an eighth. The two and an eighth allows you to run a two and a quarter OD tube uh, with 065 wall and line up 
inside, line to line. So that would be a thinner wall tube. We're running a little heavier tube out here on the engine itself. We're running a two and a half inch stainless tube that's a 150 wall, so the inside is two 200. So it's a bit bigger than two and, two and an eighth. The radius on this bend is three inch. When you look at a stock up pipe on a Duramax, it doesn't look anything like this. It's much smaller, and most aftermarket up pipes, in fact, all aftermarket up pipes are smaller than this. As far as the turbochargers are concerned, these will support, these are 6870 precision ball bearing turbochargers. They've got a 2618 forged aluminum compressor wheel and a 713C Inconel turbine wheel. So they are very high temp capable. Of course, ball bearings help with the response and these are ceramic, dual ceramic ball bearings. Coming over to the compressor, we've got a four inch inlet. When this goes back in the dyno cell, we're probably gonna have two of our big ass air filters and dual MAF sensors feeding into this four inch inlet. I don't want any pressure drop through that intake air system. Four inch compressor in, two and a half out. We're also looking at another version of, uh, of the compressor that is called the H, which is four inch in, three inch out. We've already provided two and a half to three inch diffusing hose connections that, that we make for this purpose. And we're running three inch into a charge air cooler, which is water cooled. And then the air flows into the supercharger. Once the turbos take off, I fully expect that the supercharger will need some bypass around it. I don't know that for sure, but I'm providing for it. So we've got a 60 millimeter turbo smart wastegate taking this air, which will be 400 degrees plus. So it'll have, being an exhaust wastegate, a lot of temperature overhead, but will it, we're able to modulate the valve based on the pressure difference from the inlet of the blower to the outlet of the blower. As we get this thing into operation, I'm gonna talk more about how we're gonna control this bypass valve. We come out of it and into the base of the supercharger on each side. So the total cross-sectional area of the tubes and inlets is greater than the 60 millimeter valve and seat arrangement in this device. Also here on the top, this is a blow off valve. What is that for? Well, on a normal gasoline turbocharged engine where you have a throttle after the compressor, when you drop throttle after a, a hard pass, you drop throttle, you're stalling the compressors. So there's nowhere for the air to go. So it's very common to have a bypass valve built into the compressor or one like this that just exhausts the atmosphere. So you might say, well, it's a diesel. There's no throttle. Well, I'm telling you, the minute you turn off the fuel going into the engine, the RPM drops very rapidly and you have the same problem you have with the throttle. It's not quite as pronounced, but you can run the compressors into surge. There's nowhere for the air to go, so to speak. I kind of like the fact that it's got the megaphone outlet on it because when this puppy opens up, I can't wait to hear <laughs> this thing bark. It's gotta be wonderful to hear. So once we're here, the air either bypasses and goes through the charge air cooler underneath the supercharger, or it goes directly into the supercharger through this charge air cooler. Everybody calls charge air coolers intercoolers. Well, there's intercoolers and there's after coolers. This is an intercooler. It's between one supercharging device and another. And an after cooler is after the supercharging device and it's here. So they're both called charge air coolers. Some guys call them CACs. In this case, 
This is a small CAC, and this is a very big CAC. CAC is charged air cooler, CAC. Don't get any funny ideas. So on the hot side, these up pipes are stainless, but experience tells me when your exhaust temperature is going 1600 or so, these might get a little flexible. So we machine these collars and we're tying these two together. And there's a bend here, I call a compliance bend. You don't wanna make the system too rigid uh, or it may fracture. So this gives us a little bit of compliance while controlling these so they don't fall outwards. There'll be another piece from here to the plate beneath the intercooler to help control motion this way. So there'll be two more diagonal braces. Depending on how this lines through here. This right now, it's right on this uh, adapter plate. I, yeah. I'm just saying, if, if, we, if we have something like this mm -hmm. that comes to this point versus coming to this point, mm -hmm. that's what I'm talking about. Three inch exhaust lines, which will increase rapidly to four inch exhaust lines. 45 millimeter exhaust uh, wastegates with 45 millimeter outlet, which will be numerically uh, somewhere around inch and three quarter tubing. So those wastegates will probably dump towards the ground. The exhaust lines will probably end up out through the roof of the uh, monster truck. So let me walk you through how this runs. When it's idling, these are just loafing. Supercharger is putting boost pressure into the intake manifold at idle. That's what I'm looking for here. Getting boost at idle with turbochargers is kind of tough to do. The monster trucks use a real sloppy torque converter. As a result, they have a stall speed of, let's say, 4,000, 3,500 to 4,000 RPM. If we use that type the same type of torque converter they're using with the Chevys, it might be a little too loose because we've, we've got boost right off on this diesel uh, and it, they make early torque. Once this is online, in other words, you plant the throttle, the blower, you've already got eight to 10, 12 pounds of boosted at idle. The blower is good to about 22 pounds of boost pressure and then it starts screwing up the air density, which, it, you know, everybody talks boost. To me, boost is just the pressure pushing the air density into the cylinder from the intake manifold into the cylinder. It's, it's the motivating force, but it's forcing air density. Pounds of air per cubic foot, the engine's pumping. As the engine's coming up to speed, the turbochargers are lighting off. And we've got a 105 AR turbine housing uh, that we're, we're starting out with. Relatively tight, these might look a bit small, but remember this is gonna be a response program with short duration at wide open throttle. That's what monster trucks are all about. The highest duration is like 10, 15 seconds doing donuts. Uh, but other than that, blast out, blast out. So we want good responsive turbochargers. Once we're up and running, the supercharger serves as something to increase what's called the pressure ratio. Blending it in and out is a function of this device right now. How we modulate this device to bring the blower in and out of the program. In other words, We've got the ability to bypass some of the output from these compressors, but I would argue some of the output from the compressors still wants to go through the supercharger. It's gonna be every super turbo we've ever done here, and there's two different basic methods. The first device to get the air is what we call first. <laughs> In this case, it's turbos first. In other cases, we've done marine engines which are blower first, and the blower blows the turbos. We did blower first on Pike's Peak with a 14 liter Detroit diesel and Mike Ryan's Freightliner.
And we've done experimental engines for the Navy, which are blower first. The arrangement changes, and how you manage the turbochargers changes along with that. The blower is the blower. It, you, you've got a certain overdrive, and th it's, it's related to crank speed, and that's it. So this is going to be a really interesting go, and hopefully we've got enough here to hit that 1,300 horsepower number. I hope you guys are enjoying this as much as I am. Give me your comments down below, and I will see you for one more update out here before we hit the dino cell.